Zero. Mr. Chairman, I have one more thing. I do apologize that I, I did earn, warn you that I apologize in advance for my lengthy report today. And I would normally never bring this, this being a personal matter. Um, and normally, uh, personal matters of this nature you would bring into an executive session. I waive my right to the executive session because somebody else has taken that right away from me by making it public. Uh, so I had to, I had a long discussion with the school attorney yesterday and asked her for what I was going to do and gave me certain clearances of what I can or cannot do, cannot, can and cannot say. <clears throat> so what I'm about to say here has been cleared by our school attorney to make sure that uh, we stay legal because this matter is not closed and she wants to make sure that we not jeopardize whatever she's working on. Back in April of this year, uh, the town manager called, um, brought allegations, serious allegations of wrongdoing of security breach onto our business manager and our serious allegations of tax evasion on the superintendent. The town council was brought into question, was asked to investigate independently since they, uh, you know, the. It's in the interest of the schools to know what, what security breach we're talking about. The, uh, I will not go into the details, but the, suffice it to say that the town uh, uh, council carried out a very lengthy, lengthy uh, uh, investigation, a very thorough one, and advised me at the same time to seek my own counsel. So I brought my own counsel, who happens to be also the counsel of the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents and the he conducted a separate investigation as well. Both counselors, both attorneys, requested from the town to submit every and every single paper in their possession that would substantiate both the allegations on these two individuals. Uh, to this date, we have not received a single one, a single piece of information, a single paper, not one. The only thing that was ever submitted with the original allegation was a two-page report that was uh, presented to us as the a summary report of an audit of the financial systems of the school. The attorneys both, uh, not having received any documentation to substantiate the claims, have then turned to the auditors, Roselle and Clark, and ask them to please send the original report that they have, uh, they were in the possession of the, of the, the, the summary, a uh, two-page summary. And Rosalie and Clark responded, he wished to have a discussion over the phone with our attorney and uh, simply explained that there was no document to give you. Uh, obviously, our attorneys were was very, very surprised because the report clearly says this is a summary of an audit report. The auditor then explained that there has never been a report. And this is not a summary report. This was a, a report, it was simply reporting what the town manager or the town had to tell them what had happened. I apologize, it's not town manager, town had reported to them. That was the wording that they had used what the town had reported, which was a complete misrepresentation of the facts by presenting a report to the Board of Selectmen and scaring them into that security breaches were done to benefit somebody for tax evasion and so forth. And based on those, on those misrepresentations presented to them, they had authorized an investigation, which was then, and, and known to us, because our, our attorneys had requested documentation and received none whatsoever, waited, 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 and then at some point we knew that this was all along motivated by our dispute with the town and there was really no case into it, but we, went, we played along anyway. Um, when somebody accuses you of something that horrible, whether you like it or not, you have to, to defend your reputation. So we. We waited and waited and nothing was ever given to us. 
So when we asked both town council, both the uh, school council and my personal council, had asked, what do you want to do? We said, you know what, there's nothing happening. This is all, uh, all political maneuvering. I don't think it's in the interest of this town to sue the town for, for anything because at the end of the day, it's the town that's gonna pay all these legal fees and so forth. So for the benefit of the town, we decided not to do anything about it and let it go because nothing had happened. To my disbelief that uh, to two days, few days ago, uh, they released the, the uh, minutes of the, that famous uh, executive session that by the way, the entire minutes is the allegations made and nothing else. Nothing ever was ever released that, that shows clearly that this was, it, it, this was a, a complete fabrication. And um, further, after this, uh, this article had come back, thanks to the, I, I thank the Guardian News for, for making, it, making me aware that there was actually a police report filed because I wasn't certainly aware of it and I know that Mrs. Dunnett, the other person in question, was not aware of it. Our attorneys were not aware of it. And so when we got aware of it, I requested the police report and I got it and uh, I submitted it to my attorney, the school attorney, and only she, they, were absolute, they, they were absolutely shocked because it is highly improper that an attorney in the active case of accusation that you ask somebody to give you all the documentation and they have re they've never received the police report, ever. So the, the, the school attorney has authorized me to, to report to you that she never have received it, never heard of it. And this is highly, highly irregular and highly improper and unethical. And she intends, she wants the permission of the school committee to follow up and find out why in the world was that violation done. The second thing that, I, that I, I want to report is when I read the, the, uh, the police report, the entire police report in its entirety is an interview of the town manager. I, am, I left 37 years ago, I left North Africa and for, because I had no desire to live in its police state. And I left when I was 20 years old, 21 years old, to come to a country that I thought we had some freedoms. This is highly irregular. To have an investigation that you do not give the accused the right to know what they're being accused of and, or even interview them. And this, this behavior being done right in the middle of a state that is the most democratic state in the most democratic nation on earth. It is improper, it is illegal to do that. And I personally have directed my attorney to seek remedy for character defamation as well as uh, de depriving us of our own civil rights. And I, I, I today ask you formally, it's particularly because you're implicated in that, because in that report it says that the school committees ignored the matter, making you feel that you were covering up for something Ill illegal. I'm asking you to do the same, to authorize the, the attorney to seek remedies for defamation of character and illegal and, and depriving, uh, depriving officers of the school of their, of their civil rights. So Thank moved. You. Second. Second. Comments or discussion? Again, I, I, um, I'm, I'm blown away because I am a person, I, I, I am a news junkie, so I get my Gardner News every day, I get my courier, I look at the telegram on Sunday, and I was personally shocked at some of the things that were in there that were people's quotes. That was so disturbing to me. I also, I, I mean, I don't know, but if, if Officer Walsh was the investigator, I have, I have not been contacted by him ever. Has any other member of the school committee been contacted by Officer Walsh with this investigation? No. no. So it's not an investigation. He took a statement. He, it was not an investigation. He took a statement from the town manager. That's, that's just, <laughs> that just, that just blows my mind. And, and um, 
uh, there was uh, another weird comment about the school committee doing something that was, was going to take action and we backed out or some crazy thing like that. And I just, I can't tell, I, 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 this is so offensive to me because I can't tell people enough that this is the difference that we have between the school committee and the way the town operates. I wrote a letter to the editor in response to something else, and one of the statements I made was, if the town knew how much time we have spent dealing with these kinds of things from the town manager, how much time it's taken, and you know what? We know. Every time something has happened, we know. Dr. Kalfawi's experience, other people's experience, 10 years here, we, we know when it happens that it's wrong. But we have to do our due diligence. We have to do what's right. We call the attorney. We let them investigate. We, we make sure. And, and like I said, the second that, that the superintendent finds out something, we are all notified. Mike is notified. And then we either get an email or a personal conversation. There, is, there are no secrets here. When something happens, we know we find out, and then, like I said, we do our due diligence, we call the attorney to make sure that all the I's and all the T's and everything is in order, because that's what you have to do with Jim. Like I said, we had town warrant articles. How long have you guys been writing town warrant articles? And we had to go to the attorney and have them rewritten, because he would not accept them. It's on and on and on, and it is. It is defamation. It's defamation that the superintendent's picture has to be in the paper and uh, with false accusations, especially when not only our attorney, not only the attorney general, but the town's attorney. Everybody knew what happened. It was investigated. It was proven that there was no wrongdoing, and that was it. And I will also tell you, anybody who's wondering out there, documentation, it's there. So don't even think we can't prove on and on and on the things that we've done. And like I said, and that we've all known together, we are always informed, like it or not, <laughs> you know, and then we have to deal with whatever we have to deal with and we make decisions. But we know there's really, it really is transparent. Can just I, like our budgets. Can I, well, so. Uh, what did it say about the school committee? In what, in the minutes? In yeah. this article? In the article and the, in the minutes. Which article? I, <laughs> I think it's this article, article two. Day two. The, the minutes themselves reflect um, some inaccuracies which seem to be copied and pasted. Again, there's a very common thread in the police report which kind of suggests that we weren't cooperative, that we didn't we make commitments to meet. Um, if you recall that period of time back in I recall late everything. March, um, I've got, I put up my phone here for a second because I actually still have voicemails and phone calls from Jim Kreidler on the nights that this all began. So, so, so I we, we did nothing. Can I just read this please, part? Please According to Lieutenant Walsh's report, the school committee representatives involved in the issue agreed to take action, but later backed out. Never, never happened. What the conversation took place, first and foremost, they tried to isolate myself and meet with the chairman of the school uh, board of selectmen at one point, which is a different person at this time, uh, and, and the town manager to discuss the matter. Uh, I was called very late and persistently on a Thursday night, I believe, uh, that there was an urgent situation, um, ramping it up, ramping it up, anxiety, uh, the whole thing to get me to do something without... Um, some people have suggested that I don't um, put my opinion out there as much as maybe I should. But I also I feel that all of us have a responsibility to, when we do respond, to respond responsibly. Um, we don't want to say things that could potentially um, get us into a deeper pot of water. Um, so with that in mind, um, superintendent was advised um, that evening, probably at 11.30 at night, when this all began, there was a series of phone calls and, and a push to have a special meeting that Friday, which 
and we contacted our lawyers, which under the advice of the attorney said, no way you do that. Um, then there was an agreed phone call in which we had representation. I just wanted to hear what they had to say. Um, and then from that, they somehow surmised that I agreed that we would meet and call an emergency meeting that Monday. Uh, never agreed to it. I said I would have to get to the board and find out what they want to do. Um, and then upon further advice from the attorneys, that was suggested that we did not do that. Yes, I mean, that we were suggest that we had done nothing well, when we hired our attorney. It's, it's, I'm, just, I'm not trying to argue that fact at all. I'm just trying to present the other side of this, the, the, the rest of the story that's right, not in the that's report. Not really um, but, but as you go proceed through, through this timeline uh, in, the, in the police report, it also suggests uh, you know, that we agreed to do things but it, uh, and that we were non-cooperative. Um, I'm sorry, I lost about a week and a half of sleep during that period um, where to say we did nothing is ludicrous. Um, there was conversations, multiple conversations between attorneys either through the phones or via email, um, demands made. Um, um, you know, to, to, to basically we're not taking this matter serious enough. Um, that I take offense to. The, the, but again, proceeding in a manner that was cautious to protect the integrity of two individuals at the time. Um, and at the end of the day, there were was, there was several conversations, exchanges, an attorney request for all data and information regards other than this summary report that was then uh, after a conversation with the attorney to that auditing firm said there is no other documentation this is just what it was a, a you know what was told to us um, they misrepresented represented that as far as I'm concerned what it was um, and then after that um, there was several back and forths between mostly attorneys and and with all that um, it w the matter, as far as I was concerned, was dropped. Um, as far as fast forwarding to to this recent week, um, you know, when I got a call Monday, uh, excuse me, Tuesday, from from the reporter from the Gardner News, my full expectation was to get one, because I thought he was going to want to comment about the previous evening. How do you think that's going to impact the schools? Are you going to cut the money? Those kind of questions. Instead. I always dropped a bomb about tax evasion. I chose to no comment that evening because I didn't want to say the wrong thing. And it was 6 o'clock, it was his deadline, and he made sure I, he knew that. I've got a story to write, I'm going to write it regardless, and I chose to no comment. The following day, uh, I received a voice message from the same reporter with a bit of a message that kind of had me alarmed again. Um, I returned that call um, in the presence of Dr. Kalfawi on speakerphone uh, after listening to his message, and he told me that there was a, um, a police report now. And I said, before I comment, I would like to see the report. And we got the, we got the report, we looked at it, we looked at other documentation that was accompanied by the executive session minutes released on Monday night, which is a DOR report and an attorney general's, attorney general or district attorney? District, district attorney's office report. Um, that, that whole episode involved, um, the, the, the police report triggered a request to the district attorney's office to investigate in turn, they turned to the Department of Revenue to see if it rose to any standard of, of um, tax evasion or some wrongdoing of some sort. They have standards. Um, they, they chose not to opine, per se, on the specific case, but in general, when, you have a, when you're trying to prosecute <coughs> against tax evasion, it has to meet three standards. didn't meet any of them. So that's what they reflected back to a letter back to the district attorney's office, who in turn wrote a letter back to Chief Livingston, I believe, um, t saying that this doesn't rise to, and, and both, I, I don't understand the interpretation that the reporter used, came up with. If the, he had the same documents that I read, I, they basically said, leave it alone. It's, it's, not, it's a non-matter. And even if it was true for the amount of money it was they were talking about it doesn't rise to a prosecutable 
offense anyways one of the things that bothers me most about this in the discussions and the back and forth between this whole discussion about the cell phone and reimbursement was in order to have done something wrong you had to have violated an iris rule there is documentation that has been provided that says that cell phone reimbursement is a non taxable item so i think the intent was you know to correct the, the, the pro processing of a payroll was misinterpreted as something that wasn't. Um, you know, you're not supposed to, I, I, get, I get a cell phone reimbursement for my job. I don't get paid taxes on that because it's a reimbursement of money I've already spent. So, you know, where we are now is um, the, 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 the situation is, is that it, um, um, you can't undo what happened. That's, that's the problem. It's, it's been put in the paper. Um, it's unfortunate that the newspaper chose to run a story without substantiating anything, without asking for documentation. I did ask them to hold the story, which is not typical, I know that, but I said, you're, you're throwing something on us at the last minute for a deadline, and I said, if you wait a day or two, we'll give you everything you need. Um, he chose to proceed without that. And then here we are, where we are. Um, if I may add one more thing, please. Um, he wanted us to comment, and both the chair and myself decided to respond in writing. So we did respond in writing oh. yesterday, and he said his deadline was 5 p.m. We gave him all the explanation that this investigation was concluded long ago, completely unfounded, and found out by two attorneys that it was completely fabricated and based on falsified information. And if I may, I've got the actual document. And, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to read, I'm gonna read and, this. The, the, the article goes on to cite that he had not heard from me by 5 p.m. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. This, this document yeah. was sent to Damien, the reporter at the Gardner News, at 427 in the afternoon, well before his deadline. Dear Damien, thank you for making us aware of the police report as this information was never disclosed to us. I would note this information was also withheld from our legal counsel upon specific requests that had been made for all relevant information in this matter. We are referring this matter to our legal counsel and for review for possible violation. I wish to point out that this report is nothing other than a narrative report, a narrative reported by the town manager that happens to be the source of the initial allegations. This report failed to interview either one of the two accused, Dr. Kalfawi and the previous business manager, denying them their right to respond to the allegations. The police report references a letter from Roselli and Clark, which was presented as a summary of an audit report. The validity of that letter and the existence of the audit report were brought into question by our legal counsel, whom we urge you to contact directly for more detailed information. The school committee and the superintendent and our legal counsel believed that the allegations were unsubstantiated, unfounded, and completely fabricated several months ago and constituted simple political maneuvering during a period of disagreement over net school spending deficits between the schools and towns. We kindly refer you to our legal counsel for any further question respectfully submitted, both myself as chair and Dr. Calfau as superintendent, and we provided him contact information for our attorneys. This was never, never responded to not included in the article that sh should have been in, in did, today's paper. I did receive an email today saying, sorry, due to a technical error, due to technical difficulty with the email, I was not able to receive your email, to read your email until today. <laughs> <laughs> you must know Lois Larner. Um, <laughs> yes, do you want to give that to her? Yes, sir. I would hope to see a, a full printing of it's that. It's in the IRS then. files. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Chairman, do you want this included, the content of this the letter? Included in the minutes, please. The content of the letter? Like well, just as, as an attachment. It's, mm -hmm. it's a public it's document. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so um, at this point, we're back to where the we're original motion. Which motion one? is to direct the school attorney to seek rep uh, reparations for damages. Right, I believe that's what it was. Well, legal action, legal right, action against the town manager. Defamation. Character defamations of two school employees, school officials, not just employees, school officials, as well as, as well as I think, 
I would call them school committee. Yeah. The school committee, because the school committee here is also implicated indirectly, read between the lines covering up for crime, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and also serious, serious, civil serious rights violation. civil rights violation of two school employee officials. Second. Is that the motion? Is that good, Barry? Is you that got that? all that, Barry? Um, I will get it from the recording. Okay, thank the word you. Now, this is the motion that you had made before, Andrea. Yeah, thank you. And that started. Mike seconded. No, this Dr. is Dr. Kelfowie made Dr. the motion. Dr. Kelfowie made the motion, requested asked, our... Asked for the motion. I moved it. Okay. Right. Yes, okay, yeah, moved by uh, Mr. Barber, seconded by Mr. Koski. Okay. Okay, is there any further discussion? Ms. Barbara? Aye. Mrs. Saki? Aye. Mrs. Birdsong? Nay. Mrs. Harris? Aye. Chair votes aye. Would you like that to be a roll call vote? Yes, please. Mr. Chair. Can I make a comment, please? Sure. Mm -hmm. I promise to make it very quick. I'm, um, I'm, I'm very sorry if, um, for, for what personally, Salah, that you have um, had to bear through the press and through uh, emails and other venues. Um, I can't, uh, I can't make it go away. I can't even explain it. Um, I don't know personally the reporter for the Gardner News. Um, I had I had thought and uh, <coughs> made an assumption that perhaps the reporter's true intent, even though I, I didn't read it, um, I certainly did hear about his recent article. I was uh, shocked to hear that there was something about a police report or even uh, a recommendation of a district attorney investigation resulting in consultation with the Department of Revenue and <coughs> we were um, we were all accepting Mrs. Harris. We were all on the committee at that time, aware of what was going on. Um, not, not one of us, nor any of the Board of Selectmen, would ever have questioned the responsibility of another town official, whether it's a town accountant or a town manager. What was in question at the time was not specifically what is their their responsibility as far as reporting any suspicions or, or that type of thing. If it's part of your responsibility with your position as an employee of the town to absolutely voice what whatever misgivings that you may have, to report any suspicions that you might have, that is the role and the responsibility, absolutely. And I'm sure along with Dr. Kalfawi, and I'm sure along, honestly, with some of the Board of Selectmen, um, I've not spoken with them directly, but I'm almost assured that everyone thought this was maybe blown out of proportion, uh, a complete overreaction, and that proved to be correct, and I believe the Board of Selectmen and Dr. Kalfawi and others believed that that was it, and there was no further issue or no further distance that that was going to be taken. So I'm, I'm sure that the, um, some of the Board of Selectmen or Finance Committee members also might be surprised to hear that there was 
more additional resources i think maybe the reporter's intent was to sort of you know serve a notice to the residents of winston and if you haven't realized that this kind of thing is going on please wake up please be aware that this is what's going on here's how your tax dollars are being used these are the resources in the time that are being wasted and here's the end result thank you anything else? mr chair sorry sorry the hour is late yes it is i, I would ask and i apologize that we um, Basically. Well, let, me just, let me just close out this section. Are, are we done with your report? Okay. Um, just a real quick question. Um, this, is be, this is becoming um, a bit of a, a nuisance at this point, but where are we with the website? Okay. I'm looking at it right now. Because yeah. people are, you know, this is a good problem to have. Years ago, we had problems getting people to use Edline. Right. <laughs> now we have people wanting to use the service or something similar to it, which I believe is going to be School Brains. Yes. School Brains. So um, we need to get that website up and running. We need to get that access back for the parents and the communication. They're missing it, which is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, they were doing some creative workarounds, from what I understand, for some of the parents, but at the same time, you know, that's a, a big motive.